All right, guys, looks like we're alive. Good morning to you. I want to invite you to come join me just for a few minutes as we look at a few verses of Scripture today, part of our daily devotion. Oh, goodness, it's about 10 minutes after 10 a.m. on this cloudy Tuesday morning. This is the 97th day of March. <laughs> Don't it feel like it? <laughs> oh, goodness. This is the 31st day of March 2020. We're getting through it, children. We're getting through it. Morning, Debbie. Morning, Margie. Hello there, Kay. Good morning to y'all. So let's get started. Um, just kind of wanting to share a few thoughts, you know, as we're um, still going through this pandemic, this situation in in our lives, and and know that God is still on the throne. Know that God is still faithful. Know that God has everything in full control and we can rest in that and we can um, lean on him you know and and thankful for the peace you know that passeth all understanding you know the lord um, just will give us peace in a chaotic world and you know and i rejoice in knowing that the lord has all things in control and um just want to share a few verses of scripture with you and and we're looking in the book of acts chapter 20 um, verse 35 and it says i have shewed or showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the lord jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive and you know I want to share that with you and the thought of that um, good morning brother Adam good morning brother Rick and um, I just wanted to share the thought with you because as we're going through um, this pandemic as we're going through this situation you know to be honest with you this shouldn't we, we shouldn't have to have to react any differently through this pandemic than what we should already be doing. We should already be loving each other, should already be helping each other and being a good neighbor, being a good friend, being a, a good Christian, you know, and, and, and kind of lend out a helping hand. But we get so complacent in life and, and, and comfortable and, and we forget about others, um, others' needs at times. And then it's times like this that kind of wakes us up and you know kind of sets a fire under us if you will that um, makes us want to do better um, galatians chapter 6 verse 2 simply tells us to bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ and the reason why i'm giving these this these two scriptures to you um, this morning is just to encourage each other you know, because as we know, the president has issued another 30 days of, of social distancing and, and you know, um, which in my opinion is a good idea, even though, you know, we're, we get stir crazy sometimes and, and all that. You know, I've seen some people get on Facebook and they gripe and grumble and complain about churches closing. But the thing of it is, is they don't even attend church when they're open. You know, I think they're just used to complaining. But... I digress. Um, anyway, I shared these scriptures with you just to encourage one another <clears throat> during this another 30 days of social distancing that, you know, check out, you know, check up on each other, you know, make a phone call. Um, you know, we've got social media, you know, we've got, you know, the messenger and, and all these different um types texting and all that we can you know message people and see how they're doing you know see if they need something you know you may not have to go into their homes but you can drop a sack of groceries onto their porch you know and then let them know it's there and and you know let them 
come get it after you're safely away. You know, there's ways that we can take care of each other. Um, this hoarding and all these things that, you know, was going on, which I don't really know if that's still going on. I know a few days ago, um, Dusty went to Walmart and, you know, everything was stocked and, you know, even toilet paper, even though we didn't need it, um, everything was stocked and everything was on shelves and stuff. So maybe people's calming down a little bit, but there are people that's not able to get out. Maybe you can help them, you know, um, and sometimes we're afraid to ask because, you know, you need me to pick you up something from the store, you know, and they're afraid that they're going to say yes and, and not offer the money. You know, you may not have the money to buy somebody something, but they may be willing to say, here the money, you know, I'll leave it and go get it, you know, work it out some way. But if you do have extra money, you know, and want to help somebody out, why do that? My goodness, you know, um, God will bless you for it, you know, and God will take care of you and he will protect you you know i've never been able to outgive god never never been able to outgive god the more you share this seems like the more the blessings just come and 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 um just more than we can handle <clears throat> but i wanted to share this um, story with you. This is a story that we've heard, no doubt, as a child, you know, probably most of our lives. The best that I can come up with, this story has been around since the um, 1700s. And, you know, and, I, and we've heard this story in TV shows and children's books and all that. And it's just called Stone Soup. And I, and, and I was reading this, I was actually thinking about it a few days ago and was rereading it. There's several versions of this story. I don't know which one's the original version, um, but, and I'm not even going to read the story to you. I'm just going to kind of give you the footnotes. But the version that I read talked about um, three soldiers that was wandering after battle, and they was wandering into a village. And they got to the village, and, and the village was hit hard by the war, by the battle. And um, there was not a lot of people in the village, and they looked at uh, across their farmlands, and they were barren and, and all. And, um, and they decided that they was going to talk with the, the village um, leader and they was asking for food and the leader said we have no food to give and all and and so you know the story went on that the soldiers decided you know that they was going to make stone soup and you know so um, you know the story they was standing there and they was talking with the elder of, of the vill village and and they said if we just had an iron pot and and some water and and some wood for fire you know we would make stone soup and we would feed everybody in the village and and somebody was you know peeking out and heard and they they you know the story they they um, offered hey I've got a, an iron pot that you can use and then somebody else brought water somebody else brought the wood they started the fire and each one of the soldiers had dropped in a smooth stone and then one of them you know tasted the you know water a little bit and said if we had some you know salt and pepper and the other one said if we had some parsley maybe some turnips and and each thing each item that they asked for you know to add to it somebody volunteered you know and they said oh yeah you know we've got a little bit of this and that to spare and and they would go into their storehouse and they'd bring in some brought carrots some brought potatoes even some offered um you know um, um a meat bone you know and 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 soup bone so they all added just a little bit and before long they had this stew and everybody in the village was able to eat and you know I know this is a little bit cliche maybe some may even think that's a little cheesy you know um, to use a story like that but you know I love the meaning and I love this um, the implements of this story you know because it just shows that if we work together and, and we would participate. Now, some wants to rip this story apart and they critique it to death. You know, some will say, well, these soldiers, they was actually being deceiving because they tricked them into giving food and all that. And, and you know, you, you can tear the story apart if you like to. You know, I, I like the ending of this version of the story because it said that everybody had eaten you know the stew and then they was singing there was dancing there was music and everybody was celebrating everybody was getting together you know and they was rejoicing they was forgetting about their problems you know and they was rejoicing it said the next day when the soldiers has um, woken up 
from their sleep, they noticed that the leader of the village and everybody, the elder of the village and everybody else around was standing there and they had bread and cheese and, and they had laid it by their feet. And the elder had spoken up and said, you know, because you taught us how to make soup from stones, we want to give you this gift as you leave. And we want you to know that we'll never forget this. And supposedly one of the soldiers spoke up and looked at the crowd and said, you know, there is no secret, but this is certain. It is only by sharing that we may make a feast. And off, the, off to um, the wilderness or wherever they said that the soldiers had gone. But it said the moral of the story was that they all participated in taking care of each other. They all, you know, kicked in, pitched in what they had. Now, you may say, well, you know, uh, that's just a fable. Well, let me give you another story that I know 100% is fact, that I know with all my heart and my heart of hearts that this is true, and you can go into Matthew chapter 14, verses 14 through 21, and you can read about a little boy who had two fish and five loaves. <laughs> Aren't you glad that little is much when God is in it? The little boy had just enough for himself, maybe a little extra, but nowhere near enough to feed 5,000 people. And you know the story as they was preaching to the people and the disciples came to Jesus and said, well, it's about time to send everybody away because it's getting dark and, and it, you know what, we're not going to have enough to feed all these people. And I love when Jesus takes an impossible situation and makes it possible. He doesn't do it to show off. He does it to show us just who he is and he said set these people in groups of 50 and 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 he's like there's a little boy here that has two fish five loaves bring it to me and and they the boy willfully gave it to him i don't read anywhere where he was begrudgingly saying no 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 don't take my lunch but willfully gave what he had children that a preach all on its own you know, for some reason, we think that if we don't have some great big, you know, um, offering for God, then it's just a waste of time to give it. <laughs> Jesus could make the fish jump out of the water if, we ne if he needed to. All God wants from us is our obedience. I hear people all the time, I don't understand why you have to pay tithe when you go to church. You know, you pay to go to church. Listen, my father has it all. It's to show obedience when we give 10% back. Tithes, that's what tithe means. Tithe, 10, 10th, 10%. But, and then we got 90% of the blessings that God gives us undeservingly. And we bellyache and complain about that. But anyway, I'm not preaching about ties today. But the little boy gave his lunch. And Jesus blesses it. And not only did he feed the 5,000, but if there was women and children along with the men, they ate too. And Scripture goes on to say that there was enough left over that 12 baskets was full. How many disciples did Jesus have? Was there 12 with him? Listen, you cannot outgive God. You cannot outwork God. And if God lays it on your heart to help somebody, God puts it on your heart to bless somebody, if you see somebody that's in need, you don't need God to tell you to feed somebody if you see somebody hungry. That's just common sense. But we say, oh, God didn't lay on my heart to share bread with somebody, and there they are laying on the ground starving half to death, and you need God to nudge you and tell you to feed somebody? You need God to nudge you and tell somebody to you know tell you to be good to somebody to help somebody. Listen, if that's the case, then you've got more problems than than that person laying there starving half to death. Folks, let us love each other. Let us help each other. This that this situation that we're in, it's a bad situation. But it could be a lot worse, or it could be a lot better. It's just up to us if we're going to care for each other, take care of each other, 
love each other, provide for each other. Look in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, and it says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. I had commented on this, um, Brother Jim Nelson, I hope he's on here, um, Pastor Jim Nelson, Comanche, Texas. And he actually had a devotion this morning. I enjoy um, listening to him and definitely recommend you guys checking him out. Um, but he actually, his devotion was all right along the lines of this, you know, to help when we can help. You know, there's sometimes that we have empty pockets and we can't help. But there's all, we can always pray and we can always put forth an effort. And what comes to my mind is little as much when God is in it. When God is in it. You know, you may say, well, I don't have much to offer. You know, and, and I'm almost ashamed. You know, what about the little widow who gave two mites? You know, the widow mites. And, you know, the widow who gave that offering. And then you had all the other people that had the money that was given. And they asked, you know, what Jesus asked, who gave more? You know, this little widow, or that they gave the mite, or was it the, you know, those the others that gave, you know, a, a pretty sizable offering? And one spoke up and said, well, I would imagine it was her because she gave all that she had. Folks, listen. Jesus is not looking at the quantity that we're able to give. He's looking at our hearts. He's looking at the willingness to help. I remember reading a story. Matter of fact, I think we covered this sometime before in another devotion, and it kind of fits here too. But it talked about a boy um, on the ocean, you know, um, the the sand, the beach there, and he was woke woke up one morning, and the old man was already up there walking across the beach, and he's looking at that little boy, and he was throwing all those starfish back in the water, and and he. The man looked at the little boy and said, what? what are you doing? He said, I'm throwing these starfish back into the ocean. And he said, young man, there's no way in the world you're going to be able to throw every one of them. He said, so why waste your time? What does it matter if you throw 10 of them if there's 100,000 laying there on the beach? And he said, it matters to this one. And he threw it back into the water. Listen, you know, you may think that you're offering, you may think that what you do for somebody doesn't matter, but it matters to them. Let us show the love of Jesus Christ. Not by your words, not by your lip service. But show the love of Jesus Christ by your actions. Because your actions speak so much louder than your words. I left a tag on our heading here that I um, really recommend you. It's a safe site, I promise. If you click on to the link, it takes you right to a YouTube page. And there's a song on here I'd love for you to listen to. It's by Russ Taff. Um, it's called We Shall Stand, or We Will Stand. And um, just listen to the words. The video actually has the lyrics of the song so you can understand the, you know, and read the words. And let this um, resonate in your heart. You know, pray, God, you know, let us show love to one another. Let us give praise to you and let us show love to one another. If you do that, I'm, I promise you, God's going to bless you. Don't do it because you think you're going to get some kind of blessing out of it. Do it because this is the commandment of the Lord to provide and to take care and to help each other. But in so doing, we will be blessed. Folks, so listen, I want to um, encourage you today, you know, we don't have to be on our own. We don't have to go through this by ourselves. Trust in God. Love on each other. And God will provide. God will protect. So that's all I got for you today. Lord willing, we'll be back on tomorrow with another devotion. Until then, guys, just be blessed. Love each other today. Thanks for watching. God bless you.